Hi everyone, Vonda Brewer here. It's good to be with you. It is Monday, April the 15th, and I have a word from the Lord for you, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm going to give you some scriptures today. Uh, I'll tell you the dream first. Last night I had a dream, woke up very disturbed. Um, a Christian in the dream that I knew just wanted to be a type of in-the-closet Christian um, said, I don't want to serve God. I was, I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, who is, God, what, seriously? There's, the heart of a man or woman that you died for to bring salvation to does not want to serve you? I mean, it's an honor and a privilege to serve the Lord. and. I just got fiery mad and I wondered if it was okay for me to be mad and then as I studied out some scriptures to prepare for this, I believe that I'm right and I'll share that with you at the end. But first of all, if um, I've been serving the Lord for uh, over 30 years and yes, it has its up and downs, but you know, it's an honor and it's a privilege and it takes so much time for God to equip you and we can serve him in lots of ways until we get equipped into the fivefold ministry office, one of them. But the point is, is that serving God is not a request if you're a Christian. It is a command. It is a command. What scripture do you have to set, to back that up, Vonda? Well, I'm going to give you some. Thank you for asking. Um, get out your Bibles or get out your papers and pen if you want to or type on your, type on your tablet. But First Peter 4 10 through 11. Now we know Peter betrayed Jesus and he went through some um, cursing struggles and stuff of that. But basically he's saying that each of you, 4, 10 through 11, 1 Peter, each of you should use whatever gift that you have received to serve others. Okay? Should. And then he says, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So he's saying each of you is speaking to Christians and that was uh, the context of the dream, should use um, whatever gift you have received to serve others as well as be faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. So to be gracious, giftings can be things that you do for your work, something that you're gifted in. Uh, maybe you're a gifted um, basketball player in the NBA. Um, but then there are gifts of the Holy Spirit in the spiritual realm. So there's all types of gifts. And he's speaking about gifts here. So... If you're not called to be in the fivefold office of uh, apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, or teacher, there's lots of forms of service that we can do. And um, we're to be faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms, okay? And he says here, this is a command, do not be slothful, slothful. Do not be slothful in zeal. So we're supposed to be zealous, not just I don't want to do it, but have zeal to do it, you know, and be firm in spirit, serve the Lord. Faithful stewards operating in God's grace, showing grace while we're operating our giftings, be zealous, fervent, serve the Lord. That's not a request. Galatians 5.13, it's going to get a little heavier here. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Now we know um, whom, um, uh, that Jesus sets us free, right? And in, he says, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. And he's writing again to the church. Um, he's writing, um, this is Galatians 5, 3. Brothers and sisters, only, I said, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity to self-indulge. Indulge in self, self-indulge, self-serving. But through love become slaves to one another for the whole law is summed up in one single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So it gets even deeper, right? He's saying we've been called to freedom, yes, but then he puts a demand on us not to use our freedom as an opportunity to self-indulge, uh, don't be self-serving, 
And he turns around and says, but through love become slaves to one another. Serve one another. I'm slaving for you today. I've been in the word all day long. Am I getting paid for this? No. Nope. Jesus is going to pay me one day. And I, but I have zeal and fervency for him. I'm not saying that I never, I never fall short because there are days where I, you know, go, okay, Lord, let me make this message. I don't really want to. Can you help me get ready to? And, you know, even though I got kind of fiery about this word today, I'm like, really, God, like, who is this type of person? Like, I'm tired, God, but I need to have zeal. I need to be fervent. I'm correcting myself here, too. When I read the word, it corrects me. And so God's correcting us today. Um, now, I do want to serve God, so that part does not fit me. Do I get tired at times? Yeah, but I want to serve God. And um, so, and I know many of you do out there too. So he's calling us to be, through love, become slaves to one another because you love each other. You know, for the whole law is summed up in one single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, right? So, um, you know, I know that people work and it's okay to work and to make money but when you're just working all the time and you're not making money and this person in the dream had on um square silver stud earrings and they were chunky pieces of silver and i believe god's let me know that they're into the money into making money that that's a money statement silver big 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 um studs like that so um, when you're making into just making the money and just working and being a good provider, you just can't be all good provider, woman or man, wife or husband, mother or father, and not be who God wants you to be in the spirit realm. You just can't be all carnal, all fleshy, and just me, myself, and I, and no more. It's just wrong. We were created for a relationship. We were created to serve one another. We were created to serve God. And so um, Jesus, when he was being tempted uh, by the devil, it was the Holy Spirit that led him uh, in a time of testing. But the Holy, the um, enemy, Satan, tempted him. And, you know, you might think to yourself, well, that's Peter. You know, that's um, Paul writing um, in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 13. Okay, well, you know what? Jesus even gets more firm. And when Satan was um, tempting him, Jesus said, now this is the master himself. He says, go away, Satan. This is Matthew 4, 10, the New American Standard um, Bible version. Go away, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Go away, Satan. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Now we know that you have to work, or most people work to make money. That's a type of service, whether you're doing blue collar work, whether you're in sales, whether um, you're in services, um, you know, depends on what your job is. Even if you're a housewife and you're not making money or if you're a caretaker and you're not making money, it's, we're still in some way, shape or form, um, ser servants. And, um, Jesus was very firm about that. Go away, Satan. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And that's in Matthew 4, 10. And in Matthew 6, 24, um, the word says that no one can serve two masters. It doesn't say no one can serve 10 masters. It doesn't say no one can serve uh, 50 masters. It says no one can serve two masters. And then Jesus gets even more specific. For he either will be, for either will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. For you cannot serve God and mammon, which is God and money, God and wealth, God and riches. You can't serve both of them so he defines the two masters god riches god well 
God, mammon. You can't serve both of them. Because if you do, he says you're going to love one and despise the other. And this person in the dream with the big silver stud earrings was despising servanthood of Jesus and them being a Christian and obviously didn't mind having the money because they were flaunting those silver stud. Huge ear earrings, big old squares. So I don't know, um, I just think it represents money. And God had that in the dream for a reason. So the person obviously didn't mind wearing the money, flaunting the money, but they were disgruntled and had a really bad attitude, negative, and claimed they did not want to serve God. Well, if that's the type of Christian that God is talking to today, and I know that it is, you need to check yourself. You need to judge yourself so you won't be judged because the Bible clearly states what's going to happen to those who serve the wrong master. It's God or money. We call ourselves Christians and we don't want to serve God? How far? How far has someone fallen that they do not want to serve God? Jesus that laid down his life on Calvary and you have the nerve to call yourself a Christian and that's the attitude? It, those scriptures are very clear. And I thank God, even though I woke up and I was very disturbed, I'm glad that he's addressing it. If he chooses to use this ministry to do it, if he chooses to use myself to do it, uh, whether there's any ministry uh, uh, attached to it or not, as far as in payment and form, then to God be the glory because it's on his heart. It is on his heart. He will be loyal to one and despise the other. So you show up at work faithfully, probably get there an hour early, probably do a little overtime. What are you giving to God? You tithing? When's the last time you tithe? When's the last time you gave your love offering? When's the last time you went to church and gave your gifts and your talents and served there? When's the last time you worked in the spirit realm with what God's gifted you with spiritually that's not related to just work, whether that's, you know, sh uh, shining shoes or uh, cleaning cars or um, uh, maybe you're in the military or um, maybe you're a nurse, maybe you're a doctor. You know, you get paid for that. That's your payment. But God requires so much more. Jesus is not the presiding president over the world. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And a king demands servanthood. Also, taxes and the, I remember in the Old Testament uh, when, when Israel wanted a king, God basically told um, them, you know, that he's going to tax you, he's going to do this, this, and this, and such and this. They didn't care. They just wanted a king. Kings can be abusive in power, but Jesus is the king of love. He's the king of glory. He is the king of salvation. He is the hope of our salvation. And he's patient with us, but he knows when to jerk the chain on us because we've gone too far down the wrong road. So, and I'm not saying that we're dogs or we're animals. I'm just saying he knows when to pull back, pull up, and to put a stop to something. He knows who's watching, who's listening. And he is warning us today um, that we cannot serve two masters. We can't serve God and riches for you'll hate one and love the other. So, you know, you don't want to spend your time um, serving God 
First of all, if you're a Christian, you're wrong. It's a command. Second of all, um, Jesus is worthy. He's worthy. If he never does another thing for us, he's worthy based on what he's already done. Third of all, he is a good God. And we should be so glad that he is the Lord that's sovereign over all and not Satan. Yes, Satan is the prince of the lower air realm, but God the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit are in the third heavens, the second heavens, the first heavens. I mean, they're all over the place in their sovereignty and their omnipresence. And they're just, I mean, just thank God. I thank God he's in control. How much evil would befall us if he was not a loving God, not only a loving God, but a God who is love. He is love. He doesn't have love, although he does have it, but he is love. He is love. And so let's check ourselves because um, in Colossians 3.23, um, Paul writes, he says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And he says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So he's saying, whatever you do, whether it's at your job, whether it's something at church, whatever it is that you do, do it as unto the Lord and do it heartily, because he knows you're going to receive a reward from, from Christ. Now, there he goes back. He goes back to, you're going to receive a reward to Christ. Do it as unto the Lord, because there's only two masters. There's, well, riches, and I'm using different um, um, adjectives to describe them based on what version if you read of the scriptures and then you have God so he's specifically telling Satan to go away and to serve only God who I mean <laughs> Satan he's got a lot to offer it's temporary. It's fleeting. Satan can help make you rich. Satan can keep you so busy making money you never have time to tell anybody about Jesus. You never have time to go to church. You never have time to be a good father. You never have time to pursue the call of God in your life. You never have time to uh, be interested in a, a, a dream or a vision about what the Lord is saying. You don't have time to read your Bible. Oh yeah, he'll keep you real busy. Real busy. Maybe he'll find your wife or husband. He'll buy you another dog. So not only do you have children that you got to take care of or you feel you got to take care of because it's the right thing to do, but then you get a couple more dogs and you get some cats and you get some birds. And before you know it, you're just so busy, busy, busy. Or you run into this soccer game, that football game. So God gets put last. I said, God, I said, you give us this beautiful earth to live on where the sun is shining. You give us beautiful oceans and sandy beaches and the wind and the waves and the opportunities to travel. And you give us love and you give us um, the giftings and, and you help us become who we are. And you care for us and you, you, you command heaven and earth and you sovereignly watch over us and put angels in charge of us and we put you last we don't want to serve you i don't know about you but if somebody was staying in my home like that the way that some of us live on the earth i don't think they'd be in my home but maybe it passed today so you can come here and enjoy the lights and the TV. You can enjoy the ice cream and you can enjoy kicking your foot up. You can enjoy the massage chair. You can enjoy the jacuzzi. You can enjoy the pool. You can enjoy um, the air conditioning. You can enjoy the grass. You can enjoy the laughter of children and you can enjoy a happy home and you never say thank you and you don't want to do anything to serve me. Get up and wash a dish. You don't want to pick up a vacuum cleaner. You don't want to mop a floor. You don't want to do nothing. Just take, 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 take. You don't want to serve me as good as I've been to you. That's what we do. 
a lot of us live on this earth, suck up the oxygen in the air. It's just, he deserves more. Frankly, if someone's staying at your house like that, they shouldn't have to ask. I'm a visitor in somebody's home. I just mopped the floor today, swept it yesterday, do dishes on a regular basis. They shouldn't have to ask me. They shouldn't have to ask. God should not have to ask us to serve him, and he shouldn't have to command us to serve him. But just in case somebody later might say, well, it's not in the Bible, he made sure he put the command in there through Peter's witness, through Paul's witness, through Jesus's witness. And Jesus um, shares a parable in uh, Matthew 25, as well as in Luke 19, Somebody has been giving gold. Somebody has been given talents. I'll go with the talent ones. Um, you might know the story most likely. I'm not going to read it to you because a sake of time. We're at 21 minutes now. But basically, you know, it's supposedly a hard master. Um, he gives these talents out and he wants a return on his money. The one person um, brings a tenfold reward. I believe it was ten. And then the other five, and he's given, um, well done, good and faithful servant, or well done, and he's given uh, the ability to rule certain cities and the amount of cities that match, I believe, his, um, his sacrifice and, and the way that he invested the talents. But the last one um, was given one talent, I believe. And this is what the Word of God says. And this is um, basically the, the same one is a bag of gold and one is a talent but basically the guy with the talent hid his under the ground because oh you're a harsh master i know you'd want it i know you'd want um you know this and that and and uh so i just stuck it under the ground so you didn't lose what you have and with the bag of gold and basically god was just doing lip service he was afraid and um fear is not from god it's from the devil um, Jesus gives us, um, the, the Spirit of God gives us faith. Anything that is not of faith is sin, uh, the Word says. I believe that's in the book of Romans. So, um, to the bag of gold part, it says, So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags, the other's uh, uh, ten talents, okay? It says, For whoever has will be given more, and they will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm not gonna add to that. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. That worthless servant. Cast him out in the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You look up those adjectives and adverbs, and see where you find it. It's related to not heaven. You know, we're called to serve, we should want to, we're commanded to serve. If you don't want to serve, well, you know what? You're bowing your knee to Satan. And if you don't want to serve as a Christian, and you don't want to bow, you don't want to submit yourself to God in that area of your life, you don't want to judge yourself so you won't have to be judged. This master came back and this was judgment time when he found out about the worthless um, servant when he cast into outer darkness. You know, all of us as Christians and even unbelievers, whether it's something that you're already bowing to or whether it's something you don't want to bow to, Maybe you say, um, I'm a Satanist. This message doesn't apply to me. I don't want to bow to Jesus. I don't want to serve him. You're going to bow. You're going to bow. You're a Christian. You don't want to bow. You're going to bow. It's just a matter of when are you going to bow. Are we going to bow and submit to God? When he checks us and corrects us on it and shares the commands of his word out of, because he's an all-loving God and he doesn't want to 
cast us into outer darkness. He doesn't want worthless servants. He wants loving servants, happy servants, zealous servants, faithful servants, servants who serve wholeheartedly, servants um, who aren't slothful in zeal, servants who are operating in fervency. Serve the Lord. He doesn't want you serving Satan. I hope you know enough of God to know that. So it's just a matter of when you're going to bow. You get to pick. Philippians 2, verse 10 through 11 says, So that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Parentheses, in submission, amplified version. Of those who are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess, openly acknowledge, that Jesus Christ is Lord, in parentheses, the sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. Oh, you're gonna bow. You're gonna bow. It's just a matter of when. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You know, we just got done kicking the Ammonites' butts. Amorites, excuse me, Amorites. Amorites, I talked about them the other day. They were the, they were heirs and they were in Canaan. And it was the Amorites that God was waiting for their sin to reach a full measure before Abraham, Abram went in and was able to conquer and to take that land by force. And we know that he didn't, he put his feet there, but Moses went and um, took them to the land of milk and honey and Joshua finished out um, the, whatever, everything that he did. We know that, that some of them settled short and settled shy of the promise on the other side of the Jordan, but and they didn't kick out all the Canaanites, which is why we have Israel fighting Palestine to this day. Palestinians, that's prior land of Canaanites. So, um, you know, if they would have went ahead and did everything that God said to do, this wouldn't be going on in the Middle East right now that we have going on this war and stuff. So, you know, we need to do what God says to do. When he tells us, he tells us out of love. He tells us out of his compassion. Uh, I told you the other day, we're in the end game. Um, God wants a harvest. He wants to harvest the earth. And, you know, if you're not going to bow, if you haven't been bound, correct yourself. You can change you. I can change me. I can read this and I go, okay, God, I'm bowing to you. I'm submitting to you. But I can learn from it and say, okay, i got to maintain the zeal. Eh, I can do a little more fervency. You know, let me be a little bit more fervent for you, you know. Um, I don't want to grow, I don't want my, I don't want to grow lukewarm. So let me remain fervent. Stay in the Word. Stay excited about serving. And, um, you know, I don't want to be self-serving, self-indulgent. I don't want to just live every day for the self. You know, humanism can be a God. We are made to serve the Lord. And the way that the body of Christ is set up, we're to use our gift and talents. Paul wrote a whole couple of chapters on it, I think, about somebody's the eye, somebody's basically, you know, the arm and the foot, and, you know, and... You know, your your hand serves your mouth to give it food. Your eyes serve and you see and you get to think and your body, your legs serve and you get to walk. And, you know, so we're all a body and we're, we should be functioning together and serving one another to make up a whole complete body. And so let's correct ourselves because there is coming a time. If you don't want to bow now, if you don't choose to this day whom you're going to serve and change, Tomorrow is not promised, and I'm not threatening you. I'm just stating a fact. We are in the end game. God's been giving me visions of the end game. And, you know, you're going to bow. And if you don't want to bow to Jesus, you may not realize it, but just by serving the other master, you're already bowing. You're just bowing to Satan. You're bowing to wealth. You're bowing to riches. You're bowing to mammon. Because Jesus defines the two masters. So. If we're Christians. 
we should be just as happy about serving God as we are serving to make that dollar. And we, even when we do make the dollar, we should be willing and know that whatever we do, even at work, we're doing it is unto the Lord. When we do it, when you drive that truck, God, I'm here. I'm happy in you. Use me. Let me, you know, be a good witness for a coworker. Whatever. Just give me the, you know, just you should be praying for people at your job. You should be having your light shine. I'm not gonna go into that whole message, but if you've been following this this these messages lately, you know, there's we're servants. Yes, we're sons and daughters, but we're servants. And Jesus, when he speaks, he speaks for eternity. And he's quoting Old Testament, but he spoke it in New Testament time. And he knew he was going to the cross and uh, his words will not pass away. The word of God is eternal. Not one tittle, not one dot is going to pass away. Yes, we don't still offer lambs and goats and slaughter them because Jesus is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the earth. But So God is concerned with our motive here. He tells us how to serve faithfully, zealously, fervently. Um, and we, I just thank God we get a reward. Some people say when they go to work, like a doctor, I don't need a reward. You know, it's enough reward knowing that what I'm doing, I'm making a difference in people's lives. Although we know they get paid, but we should feel that way about the Lord. You know, Lord, it's a, you know, fulfillment in working for you. Fulfillment. Thank you for letting me do what I do for money, God. And if you want to use me in the body of Christ and you know, lead me if I'm supposed to be a teacher or a pastor or apostle or prophet or uh, an evangelist or some health ministry or uh, hospitality. Or, there's so many different areas, you know. He's worthy. We owe it to him and he commands us to serve him. So make sure your master, make sure your knee is bowed. Make sure you're on bended knee. To Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he is he is our only hope God bless you and thank you for listening bye bye